Welcome to Athar's Garage. In this video, I'll be working on the Team Associated RC10 B74.2 Bag 1. This is the carpet car, so if you got a carpet car or you're just interested in the B74.2, continue watching. Alright, so for Bag 1, we're going to need actual Bag 1 and the chassis itself. So. Let's get these opened up. I do like the packaging they use for the chassis. It's a very nice thick plastic to make sure that it doesn't get scratched up or damaged while in transit. So we have our side rails. Looks like one's already kind of come off. We got our center braces. Looks like like center brace inserts. They look like they might be aluminum. No, actually they're like carbon fiber or some type of composite material, like a laminated composite. Probably some type of, I think it's some type of carbon fiber. We've got the hardware. We've got our battery straps. And one thing I do kind of like about the battery straps is you can see that it says associated molded in there. So it's kind of cool to have that. There's two different lengths. So if you're using a standard pack, use a long one. If you're using a, a low CG battery, use a short one. I don't have a LCG pack yet. So I'm going to just go ahead and install the long one. So I'll set the low CG band aside. We also have our mounts for the battery strap and the ESC tray. And then we have our bag of hardware. So I normally like to put my bag of hardware in a paper plate so that way they don't roll off or anything like that or get lost. So just a little tip. All right, got everything opened up and we can set the stuff we don't need right away to the side. All right, so we're gonna need the side rails first. So let's get them off the parts tree. I just picked up these flush cutters off of Amazon and they're extremely sharp and that made that cut extremely easy. So if you're in the market for some flush cutters, definitely recommend these. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get one. The molding is very nice, not a lot of flashing or anything like that. Just kind of had to clean up where I took it off the parts tree. All right, those are trimmed. We have our right side and our left side. Here's the chassis. The front of the chassis is gonna have the kick up. So we're gonna need four M3 by eight flathead screws. So take your screws Go to page three in the manual and line up the screw with the picture because it's life size and you can make sure that you have the right one. So definitely use page three to make sure that you're using the right screws. So you're gonna need four of those. And then we're also gonna need a M3 by 10 flathead screw and an M3 lock nut. The four M3 by eight screws are gonna install in these four holes from the bottom of the chassis and they're gonna install into these bosses here. And then the M3 by 10 flathead screw is going to install in this hole 
with the nylock nut inserted into the plastic itself. The plastic is molded, has a hex molded into it, so you don't need to hold back up on the lock nut, it just drops in. As you can see, the lock nut just drops in. All the screws are going to be two millimeter hex. I'm not going to tighten down anything just yet. I'm just going to get everything started, make sure I can get everything started and lined up, and then I'll go back and tighten everything down. And remember, you're going to plastic, so you don't really need to tighten down too hard. Um, once you feel it shoulder up, it's pretty good. All right, so let's do the right-hand side. All right, so the side rails are on. We can continue with step bag one, step one. We need our chassis braces, the front and rear. They're going to be these pieces right here uh, on the parts tree. All right, so the rear chassis brace is actually is going to be longer than the front one. Um, I'm actually amazed at these flush cutters. They're, I mean, barely have anything left to, you know, trim after that. And they cut it nice and flush, almost. You probably don't have to go the extra length to do this, but pretty OCD about this to make sure there's no nothing sharp where carpet can grab on or accumulate. And I like you to do that on every build, every car, so that way all the plastics are nice and then you don't have any sharp edges or anything like that. And all I'm using is a nail file that I cut up into a strip and like a buffing nail file as well. So, all right. So we're gonna need seven M3 by eight flathead screws. So these screws are gonna install in these holes here. Four in the back are going to go into the rear brace, and then three in the front are going to be this hole, this hole, and this hole. So this is going to be facing up because it has these cutouts. And same thing with the front mount or the front brace, the cutout's going to be facing up. So take note of that. And the holes on the bottom are going to be these four holes for the back. And I'm not going to tighten everything down right away. I'm going to make sure I can get everything started first, and then I'll go back and tighten everything. Remember, you're going into plastic, so you don't need to crank down it too hard. Once it's shouldered up, it's good. So there's a rear chassis brace. Here's the front one. So we're gonna go ahead and install the front one. It's gonna install just like so. All right, chassis braces are installed. Bag one, step two, is gonna be installing these chassis brace supports, the front and rears. I don't know if these are carbon fiber or some type of graphite, but they are very nice quality. So to install these, we're gonna need eight and three by eight button head cap screws and two M3 by eight set screws. 
So that's kind of interesting. So five of the screws are gonna install in the front chassis brace. They're gonna install in these holes here. One, two, three, four, and five. You're going into plastic, so you don't need to tighten it down too hard. Once you feel it shoulder up, it's good. Now for the rear chassis brace support, the three M3 by eight button head cap screws are gonna install in these Three holes here. Nothing's going to install here right now. And then the M3 by 8 set screws are going to install in these two holes. So it doesn't quite say how deep to install the set screws. I'm just making sure that they're flush. And I think that's probably what the intended purpose was maybe later on it'll say if we need to take them out or something but for now I'm just gonna have them flush now we can move on to installing the battery strap so we're gonna need the battery strap itself and this particular parts tree it looks like we might need all the parts off this parts tree. I think there might be one that we may not use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take everything off. So we're gonna need, looks like this battery mount and the O-ring hook front. So the way to tell these parts that you need is this particular part has this little boss on the bottom, has this little cutout on the top, and the holes for this strap line up just like so. Since we're going to install the strap and it's going to be somewhat like a permanent install on this side because of the two screws that we're going to use. So we're going to need these two pieces, the battery strap, and two M2.5 by 5 millimeter button head cap screws. So in the manual, it doesn't actually show a 5.5 screw on page three, but you can tell because it's just a little longer. So there's a side that has rounded edges and a side that has like a sharp edge. So we're actually going to install this hook on the side that has the round edges. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put the O-ring strap into the hook tight fit. So we're going to put that o-ring into the hook like so and we want the associated facing up like that. So now we can install this on the side that has the curved edges. And you're going into plastic so you don't need to tighten it down too hard. Once you feel it shoulder up, you're good. Now, this is ready to install onto the chassis in bag one, step three. So we're gonna need, doesn't technically point out in the manual what size screw you need. This is a screw that we're looking at here. Um, but over here it does say M3 by six times two, the flathead screw. This is the only other one, it's an M3 by 10 
flathead screw. So we're gonna need, let's just focus on this for now. We're gonna need one M3 by six flathead screw. There's no M3 by six flathead screw on page three. There's a M3 by eight. So just find one that is just a bit shorter and that's the one that we're gonna use. So the way this is gonna install is that we have the front of the chassis here. So front of the chassis here, we want the screw heads facing the front. So the boss on this battery mount is gonna install in this hole here, this middle hole. And then we're gonna install the M3 by six flathead screw in this hole here. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember you're going to plastic, so you don't need to tighten it down too hard. Once you feel it shoulder up, it's good. So now we can focus on the rear mount itself. We're gonna need a few different pieces. We're gonna need the battery o-ring hook. This one has a hex on the bottom. So that is going to install in the side rail. The side rail has a hex so we can install it in there and the hook portion will be facing the rear of the car. It is kind of a, a snug fit, so don't, don't worry about that. Next, we're gonna have this particular piece, and it has a hole on one side. That hole is gonna be facing down, and that is gonna install right next to the hook. And the M3 by six flathead screw is gonna install in this hole and the M3 by 10 flathead screw is actually going to install into the hook. So when I flip it over, I'll show you all. Now we have the battery spacers that we can use. And it looks like these just kind of press in to space it out. And there's three different ones. They don't all go one into each other think what you can do is actually put one in the front or put one in the rear um, but the kit setup is actually using the thickest spacer in the back so all you got to do is kind of push the spacer in and that's it so we're gonna go with that these spacers are extras so I'm gonna set those aside so we can grab our M3 by six flathead screw and M3 by 10 flathead screw. Flip the chassis over and the M3 by 10 screw is gonna install in this hole and the M3 by six screw is gonna install in this hole. Remember you're going into plastic so you don't need to crank down on it too hard. There's the battery strap. Now I can move on to installing the ESC tray and fan mount. The fan mount that is included is the one that faces the rear of the motor. I'm not gonna install that. So we'll just go ahead and install the ESC tray. And we're gonna need the ESC tray. This is the fan mount itself. And the fan mount does come with screws that you can use to install it. It's got two M3 by 16 screws and one M3 by 10 screw. And that would install in this hole in the center rear brace. So 
So the ESC tray is going to install using two and three by six flathead screws in this hole and this hole. So we can line up our ESC tray, flip the chassis, and the holes are going to be this hole and this hole. So it looks like we do have the older style battery posts that are included on for the but we're not going to use those these pieces here on the parts tree and then this is the fan mount uh, as well but like I said I'm not going to use this so I'm just going to put this back in to the box but that concludes bag one thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe if you did i didn't have any issues with this everything went together smoothly so thanks again for watching and i'll see you all in the next one where i tackle bag two